Hello and welcome my friends to Jujube DIY. Thanks for stopping by today. Today I'm participating in the monthly challenge called Try It Tuesday, hosted by Unicorn Dust Designs. If you've never been over to Sammy's channel, you definitely wanna go check it out. Check out her new video. She just did a crime and crafting video. That was amazing. So if you like true crime and crafting, go check her out. I'll leave her link in my description box down below. And as always, this challenge will include a playlist also in my description box. So Try It Tuesday is a chance for us to try other collaborators, crafts, and give them credit where credit is due. So my first craft that I wanted to try this month was by She's So Crafty. Dee is an amazing crafter. She comes up with the most brilliant ideas. And when I saw her create this, I knew I had to recreate it. So I cut my wood down to size. I will leave everything that I'm using in my description box below, along with all the measurements and the like wood that I'm using down in the description box below so if you want to recreate this i would definitely go check out Dee's channel because she is way more thorough than i am with uh putting this together but i will have those measurements down below so i cut my wood down i painted it with that hello hobby chocolate newer brown newer whatever it was <laughs> i showed you guys there i can't remember what it's called but I gave this a coat of paint and now I am just putting it together using a little hot glue for a uh, like a short term hold. And then I will um, screw use screws to screw it together. So I measured three and a half inches down from that top piece of wood. And that is where I am placing that second piece. And then I'll measure 10 and three quarters of an inch down from that second piece for my third piece. And then the fourth piece will just go right at the bottom. And again, I'm just using hot glue to put it all together, but I did go back in and reinforce with screws on the side. Now I'm taking these uh, five gallon stir sticks that I cut down to, I think they're four and a half inches. And I am just gonna hot glue them along the opening on the back side of this calendar holder. Now, if the uh, raw wood on the back side bothers you, then definitely paint the back sides of your wood. This is weighing against my wall. It's for me. I'm not worried about it. So I took tumbling tower blocks. I glued six of them together three times. So there I have three sets of six glued in a straight line. And I'm just gluing one stick at the bottom and then two along the sides using the calendar that I want to use as a guide. You want to make sure that those side pieces are sort of not super tight against your calendar. You want some wiggle room in there. So I'm just going to use hot glue to glue those down. And as you can see, I was just making sure that it wasn't too tight because you want your calendar to be able to slide in and out easily. Next, I'm going to take one gallon stir sticks and you know what? I apologize. <laughs> Those stir sticks are one gallon stir sticks that I cut down to four and a half inches. So these are one gallon stir sticks, full size that I'm gluing across the back and I'm just spacing them out. There's five of them and I'm just spacing them out as you know evenly as possible. It's just there to keep your calendar from falling out of the back there. And again, just securing with hot glue. Again, if you want detailed instructions, definitely go check out Dee's channel. 
I will link it down below for you so you can go see exactly how she created this. She does a very thorough job explaining it. <laughs> so I wanted to add a little bit of nautical rope along the edges. I had a little bit of gapping because I used the hot glue and not like a hot wood glue or a wood glue. So I had a little bit of a gap there and I just kind of wanted to cover it up. So I'm using some uh, Dollar Tree nautical rope just to kind of cover that up and make it look pretty. I really do love this brown color, but I'm thinking about distressing it or adding a crackle on top. Let me know what you think I should do. After I add all four pieces of nautical rope, I add a calendar and then I'm going to take this thrifted key hook and I'll add that to the bottom of my calendar holder. I also took one of those Dollar Tree galvanized signs that they're carrying in the crafter square section and added that to the top with a little hot glue. I love how this turned out. I think it is just adorable and it makes me so, so happy. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button down below. And if you like what you're seeing, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, share my content, and give me a comment down below. All those things really help YouTube notice my channel and helps me get out into the world. Also, feel free to follow me on social media. I'd love to see you there. My next project is inspired by Country Charm by Tracy. I'll leave her channel and the video that I am inspired by down below. I took six of these five gallon stir sticks and I cut them down to 17 inches and then used my biter box and saw to create a 45 degree angle at the top for a picket fence look. Next, I'm just going to use some antique wax by Waverly and I'm gonna use a baby wipe to add that to my sticks. Next, I'm gonna take a couple different uh, pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna cover them with paper. So I tried to use the Elmer's school glue, glue stick to do this and it failed miserably for me. So I ended up using Mod Podge to add my paper to my pumpkins. I really do need to get some more of my Gorilla Glue Stick because I really like that. It is a nice, strong hold. So I'm gonna use my knife here to cut around the outside of my pumpkin to get rid of that excess paper. And then I'm gonna cut down the back side, kind of in the middle, like where the slats are, just to get an idea of where my slats are. <laughs> so when I turn over my pumpkin, I can get those the rest of those lines perfectly instead of like trying to guess where they might be to cut them out next I'm going to take some sandpaper just to clean that the, that edge up I just folded the sandpaper in half and just kind of went in between those slats and got rid of any excess paper that was in there And look how pretty that is. I love this paper. This is one of the new paper pads from Michaels. I will link that down below. I took this big pumpkin and added some of this kind of orangey yellow paper and I'm just gonna use my uh, sandpaper there to get off the excess paper for a nice clean finish. And then for my third pumpkin, you'll see here in a minute which one it is, but it's the one that's got the three raised areas so I just Mod Podged the paper onto those raised areas. And then I kind of used my fingers to feel where those raised areas are so I could cut them down. And then I'll just, again, use a sand paper to get off all the excess paper and make it super smooth. Now you can see I did mess up a little bit where you can see there's like pieces of white but I'm going to take this paint brush. This is a dry brush and the Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm just going to distress those edges. So any of that white that's showing will just go right into that background, which I also used the Waverly Antique Wax on. And then I'm going to take that same brush and the Antique Wax, and I'm just going to create those pumpkin lines. So I'm just dry brushing this on and I will just go to town here. <laughs> Adding those little ridges to make it look more three-dimensional. I 
and here is how it looks when I got it all done <laughs> and then I'll also distress all the edges of this pumpkin as well Next, I'm going to add um, not nautical rope. This is just regular jute twine. I think this one came from Walmart, but you can use any jute twine. I'm just gonna wrap the pumpkin stems. And it gets a little tricky there at the top, but if you just take your time, use hot glue to really secure it, it works out perfectly. Make sure you use those finger protectors if you need them. And then I thought it'd be cute to kind of go down, back down the stem to create a couple of little like areas that were, you know, raised and different. I thought it turned out really cute. Next, I'm going to take one of these wood block signs from the Dollar Tree. I gave it a coat of the folk art chalk paint in the color vintage mustard. I am really loving that color for this season. And then I used some scrapbook paper to um, cover the wood as well so I just left an eighth of an inch round I think the top was one inch and the side was two inches and then I'm just gluing a little piece of paper because my paper wasn't long enough so I had to kind of piece it together in the middle and so I'm using this decorative paper just to kind of hide that seam And now we're gonna create our picket fence. So we're just gonna lay out the sticks, get them how you want them. And then you're gonna take two more uh, stir sticks, cut down to 17 inches, and you're just gonna glue those right at the top. Now my picket fence I thought would look really cute, like so it's not perfectly straight. It looks like it's maybe old and a little dilapidated. I thought that would be a really cute touch. So that's what I did. And then I'll just use a generous amount of glue down here at the bottom just to make sure that my uh, fence is attached well to my base. Next, we're gonna add the pumpkins. So I was just kind of playing around with this to see where I wanted them, how I wanted them to lay. And I decided at the end that I wanted this pretty pumpkin in the front. So once I'm happy with the placement, I'm just gonna take a little bit of hot glue and I'm gonna start picking my pumpkins down. Picking them down, putting my pumpkins down. That kind of came out funny, huh? <laughs> and then that top pumpkin, I'll just kind of uh, hot glue to the other two pumpkins, really. Isn't it pretty? I just love these colors together. So I'm making a raffia bow. This is a raffia from the Dollar Tree. And I used the orange and the green. And I just made a pretty little bow with that. And then I'm gonna take some jute twine, about three strands, and create a bow for the middle pumpkin. I love decor pieces with lots of different texture. And then from our third pumpkin, I wanted to create a bow using this, um, I don't know what it is, lace ribbon kind of. It's like a mesh ribbon on a roll with these gold leaves on it. It's really pretty. And then I found some leaves in my stash that I'm gonna put um, kind of layered on top of this pumpkin and then I'll add my bow. And I don't know what it is about film, but it always makes the orange look super, super orange. So it's a little more muted in real life than what you're seeing on, on the screen. <laughs> so I'm gonna take some of these berries. These were from the Dollar Tree this year, and I'm just going to add some randomly to my little middle pumpkin here. Then I found a couple of these old metal leaves. These were from pumpkins 
of the past and I'm just painting them with some gold paint. This is the brushed gold from Folk Art. And then I'm taking one of those welcome fall signs. These are like a six pack of wood signs that the Dollar Tree is carrying this year. It comes with a couple different sayings. And this one says welcome fall. So I just hot glued that right at the front there, added a couple of those little metal leaves. And I thought that was really cute and kind of covered up that paper. I didn't really want that paper to be like a huge statement piece, but I wanted to cover up that seam. So I probably didn't even need to add that extra paper there. As a final touch, I'm gonna to add some Spanish moss to the top of my uh, platform here. That makes it look like our little pumpkins are kind of in a pumpkin patch. Then I'm just gonna trim off any excess add where we need and here's a look at how this turned out i love this i think it is so cute and is one of my top favorites so our last project is inspired by canterbury cottage she did a whole video on uh th doing things with to make pumpkins like using odd things to make pumpkins that's what i mean to say <laughs> can't get it out tonight um yeah using different things to make pumpkins and she had made a pumpkin out of a shutter and so I was kind of looking around and I thought oh one of these signs would be really cute as a pumpkin so I went out and I spray painted all of the outside areas with the matte white spray paint that's got a primer in it and that just makes it easier for my paint to stick since I'm not using a chalk paint I'm using acrylic paint I wanted to have something to make my paint stick onto this kind of plasticky weird sign. Next I'm gonna add some scrapbook paper in the back. And I just popped off that front area of that sign. I did have to use my heat tool a little bit to loosen up the glue, but it came off pretty easily. And then I'll just glue back the gather. Next I'm taking two tumbling tower blocks that I glued together to create a little stand in the back of my sign so that it can be freestanding and a little more stable. And you might even wanna add a couple more blocks if this is going somewhere where it might get knocked over more. And then I have these dark wood tumbling tower blocks in my stash. So the tumbling tower blocks used to come in like multicolored and these are the color. <laughs> brown ones that they had. So I had some of those in my stash still. So I just glued two of them together side by side to create a stem. And then I'm just gonna add that right to the top of my sign here. Next, I'm gonna add a leaf. This was just a leaf that is from some other flower that I have in my stash, but it kind of looked a little more like a pumpkin leaf <laughs> so I thought it would work okay and then I'm going to take some of this wired jute twine this is really fun stuff I don't always find it in my Dollar Tree but when I do I grab a few of them because they're really handy for crafts like this so I just kind of put it around my stem there and now I'm just twisting it around a pen just to get those curly cues to make it look like the little, you know, tendrils from the pumpkin. And then to finish it off, I'm just going to make a green bow out of some of this sheer ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And I'll hot glue that right to the front. And I love how this turned out. I think it is so cute and so unique. I don't know. I think so. <laughs> so you'll have to let me know in the comments down below which was your favorite. Thank you so much, Sammy, for hosting this fun challenge. It is always an awesome time. I hope you guys go check out her channel. Give her a little love. Tell her I sent you, sent you over to her. And I hope you guys all have a happy, healthy, and blessed day. Now we'll talk to you next time.